Hey everyone, thanks for coming tonight. Uh, if you're here, you probably know someone on the paper team personally, so uh, we really appreciate you coming. This is like a room of our 100 closest friends, um, so it's awesome to have you. Um, we're excited to share some things we've uh, learned in, in building paper, and uh, honestly, we've benefited tremendously from knowing all of you and uh, learning from your experiences and, and sharing code. Um, in fact, we even have a, a new open source project to announce tonight. Um, the last three we've done have been pretty popular, and this is actually the biggest one yet. Um, the event format, we have five talks. Uh, each are about 15 minutes, so bear with us. It's a relatively long uh, opening segment. Then we'll have about 20 minutes for a panel Q&A with everyone who's presented, uh, but also other folks on the team uh, if they're kind of the best person to answer your question. And after that, we'll be around to talk one-on-one -on -one, uh, about uh, things we've presented or, or uh, anything you're, you're curious about. Um, these are our topics. Uh, we're gonna start with our new user experience in paper, which is very contextual. Uh, it sort of is aware of uh, things you've done in the app and tries to minimize disruption. So we'll tell you a little bit about the architecture that allows us to implement that uh, in a way that is maintainable and uh, easy for us on the development side. Um, Jason's gonna talk about clean UI code. In particular, we have a, a ton of different story types on Facebook and uh, rendering all of those uh, in a way that uh, we can then use to also compose the same types of stories and have our composer be pixel identical to what your story will look like after you've posted it uh, is an interesting sort of um, object-oriented programming challenge. Uh, and, and so Jason has some interesting uh, approaches to that. Uh, Keevan's gonna tell you about um, dynamic animations and uh, basically physics simulating animations um, and go into depth uh, there with a, a code demo as well. Um, Brian will, will talk about uh, gestures um, and making sure that your app is always interactive uh, and sort of making best use of uh, touch uh, interfaces uh, as possible. Uh, and then I'll come back up and, and kind of tie these things together and tell you about how we've made paper uh, especially fast and, and smooth. Um, so with that, uh, I'll invite up Maddie Boyd to tell you about the new user experience. Hi there everyone, I'm Maddie. I worked on Paper's tutorial system and I'm here to talk to you about how you can introduce the features of your app and leave people with a great first impression. So some background on me um, is that before I joined the Paper team, I took part in an early beta of a prototype of Paper before there was any guided tour or tutorial of any kind. And I actually, I could figure out how to use my newsfeed, but I couldn't get to my settings or create a post. And um, it wasn't until I accidentally swiped down on the main screen that I revealed the options to do this. But um, I found this, pure, sorry, found this but purely by accident. And I feel I'm pretty tech savvy, I'm a software engineer. And, uh, other Facebook employees are having similar issues. They couldn't fully navigate around the app. And if I couldn't figure it out, then how could I expect people like my parents who are a bit less tech savvy to figure this out? Uh, so some, and some more background on why um, th the paper navigational system is the way it is. Uh, the designers wanted to give as much screen real estate to stories and content and posts as they possibly could. And if you want to give more screen real estate to something, you have to take away screen real estate from something else. And so the, the goal was to minimize navigational elements in Chrome to the greatest extent possible. Uh, so here's some comparisons of the main Facebook app and paper on the right. And here I highlighted the navigational elements in Chrome and, how, and you can compare how they, we try to minimize them in paper. And um, if you don't have buttons to tap on, then you need to navigate another way and that's gestures. But if there's no clear direction on how to navigate, like there's no visual indicator, then we'd have to have some other way to tell users how to navigate. Um, so their tutorials can be very useful if they're handled properly. They can minimize churn. If people can't figure out how to use your app, they'll get frustrated and they won't spend much time with it. Um, there are too many apps in the app store with five star ratings that people won't waste time in an app that's giving them, that's causing them to be frustrated. Um, they can also, tutorials can really help make new features discoverable. Uh, so you might have a lot of really awesome features within your app that people might not ever encounter unless purely by chance. And finally, so currently the like Facebook app and paper to this day still receive negative reviews in the app store uh, for feature requests that are actually currently in the app. Um, so, and, so like you can build really awesome functionality but if people don't find it, uh, 
you might as well not have built it in the first place. Um, so, for example, like MG Siegler, another relatively tech savvy person, has been talking about how events aren't in the paper app. Um, they are in the paper app, they're just not, maybe not as easy to find. There's, uh, you can get to them through notifications if there are stories about the event in your newsfeed, or you can search for events by name, but, he, but even uh, MG Siegler can't find them. So, I used to work in an events team, so this is like personally something I, that concerns me. And um, so tutorials can uh, also be very frustrating. I admit, like, when I first joined the team and I heard that we were building a tutorial, I was like, oh, God, not another one of those. Um, because they can often just be a really bad experience. So the most common type of tutorial for introducing features of an app is the blocking interstitial, which is you start up the app. Let's say you open up Facebook. You want to po create a post or read some stories from your friends. But before you can do that, sorry, like, here, we've been announcing some updates to the app. Here, you have to click through a series of dialogues, perhaps, um, before you can actually get to the app and do what you came there to do. Um, so this can cause a lot of frustrating, because they're forced, they're up front, and they're separated from the app experience. Um, and like, if I come to Facebook, it's because I wanted to read my newsfeed, et cetera, and reading through a series of instructions, that's none of those things. It's separate to the app experience. It's like separate tutorial land. And we wanted to keep people within the app. When, so we wanted to, um, so and, like, so Facebook, we're like aware, we've been made fun of for the past, like College Humor made fun of us um, for like our style of tutorial. So we're aware of this and we're trying to make it better. Um, so some goals that we had for the tutorial that we wanted to build for paper is we wanted to space out information over time so it'd be easier to retain. If you, if you like have a fire hose of information for people straight up front, they're not gonna remember it because they don't even know, they don't know yet what they need to know to be able to use the app. So it'll it'll pass right through, and we've done user studies that have confirmed this. Um, we also wanted to make our tutorial contextually aware. And what I mean by contextually aware is we wanna show you hints for navigating around Newsfeed when you're actually in Newsfeed. We wanna show you hints on how to open up a web link if you're looking at a web link in a long article that you can swipe up and not some other time. We also wanted to provide feedback so that people can associate the right action with the right behavior and not just be swiping around completing things by accident. And we also wanted to keep a users within the app and not take them to a separate tutorial land. And we wanted to make it dismissible. We don't want to force anyone to complete this if they weren't ready at that cur currently at this time. Uh, and we took some inspiration from games. We wanted to make this like, as fun an experience as possible. So here's how it's contextually aware. Like we'll show you a hint. This is a hint about browsing around Newsfeed. Um, but if you swipe away from Newsfeed, then we won't show you that hint anymore because it's no longer relevant. You come back to Newsfeed, that hint is relevant again, and we'll show it to you again. Uh, so we also want to provide feedback. So when you take an action, there's often a progress indicator at the top that will uh, cycle up, and it'll turn green when it's complete to communicate that you've completed this hint. Uh, we wanted to keep users within the app. So for example, this is like an article that's in my Newsfeed that I want to read, so when I swipe it up, it opens it, and when I'm done, it swipes it down, and I'm back in my Newsfeed. And of course it's dismissible. If there's a hint that you, don't, you, don't, you want to go away at some time, you click the X, it'll go away. And if, you, if, you still, if we think you need that hint later, we'll show it to you again at a later time if you haven't yet completed that hint. But if you have completed it, then we won't show it to you because you don't need it. You can figure it out on your own. Uh, so there are different levels of control for when these hints will show. So at the higher level, we can turn the entire con tutorial controller on and off in a given time. For example, when you background the app, you probably don't want to hear um, our, the lady's voice telling you how to swipe up stories if you're in your settings or checking your email. Uh, we also need to be in the relevant part of the app. For instance, we'll show you hints relevant to moving around newsfeed when you're in newsfeed. We'll show you hints for how to get back from settings if you're currently in settings. We also, another way which gives us really fine getting control of whether or not we'll show a hint is each hint has a condition block. And it, so there are times where like you'll be looking at, for example, a full screen post that like, we could show you hints for what to do with that full screen post, but let's say now you open up your notifications icon and suddenly the, that hint is no longer relevant. Um, we don't wanna show you that hint even though you technically have a full screen post there. So we'll set a condition variable that we store in the tutorial controller um, to, for that we are showing the notifications dual to true. So whenever we set one of these global condition variables that communicate state of the app, it'll, the tutorial controller will go through any currently pending hints and call their condition blocks to evaluate a Boolean statement that will just do some comparison of these condition variables. If the statement evaluates to true, then we can show the hint, but if one of these variables means that we shouldn't show this hint, and the condition block evaluates to false, we'll, we won't show that hint, we'll suspend it until later. 
And finally, each hint has a start delay. And the start delay has two purposes. One, now let's say you're going from settings to newsfeed to your profile. We don't want to show you any hints to newsfeed because you're not staying in your newsfeed and it will just, you're navigating somewhere else, it will just get in your way. It'll be probably a bit annoying. Um, and also, the start delay for each hint allows us to give the user some time to complete the hint on their own. Um, so that, like, we only, we only want to show you a hint if we think you need it. If you don't need it, you know, keep on using Facebook. Um, so we also have a, so this allows us to, we also have a decoupled design for the tutorial controller. All the reviews will um, encapsulate state and tell it, send messages to the tutorial controller and then the tutorial controller can use condition blocks, condition variables, and um, all, any messages sent to it from news, like newsfeed or other parts of the app to decide which hint to show and when. Um, this allows us, so instead of having like a tightly coupled design where the tutorial controller would have to query new, like these view controllers for state information, um, this allows us, we can make changes or upgrades to the tutorial controller without having to change all the calls and view sites, the call sites and the views themselves, um, which allows us to move faster and iterate more quickly. And so we got a lot of positive response for the tutorial, which made us pretty excited. Um, in our app reviews, uh, people said the tutorial makes the app really easy to use. Um, someone else says that lovely, vo she, he, uh, she loves how the lovely voice shows and tells you how to do everything. And, um, and someone else says the tutorial made uh, him appreciate the simplicity of the app even more. And on Twitter, someone says there was a very creative tutorial. Uh, people like help people get on board, um, and the voice is comforting. So people people exhibited like uh, good positive feedback, which was good for us. Uh, but so there are th so we think we definitely did better than previous guided tours um, elsewhere. Uh, within, like at least within projects that Facebook has published, but we still like we also done user studies after the fact, comparing people's um, reactions to their first experience with the app, and we found some points of improvement. Uh, so people have been asked, like people sometimes people will request maybe uh, they want to toggle the tutorial on and off or ask for more on-demand help. Um, so we currently have a link to the help center if people want more help after they complete the tutorial. But um, one of the main goals of the tutorial was to try to figure out when people are stuck and need help. And we'll, we use condition variables and context, contextual awareness and the start delay to try to figure out when people need a hint and show, it to, show a hint when it's most relevant to you. But if people um, are still requesting help on demand, then perhaps we can do better at that. And um, also people asked for us to communicate status or progress of the tutorial. Some people were like wanting to know how far along they had gotten. And this is an intentional design decision we made to not show a status bar. That's because we want to, so a status, any kind of incomplete progress bar or status bar creates a very strong psychological urge to complete it. Humans don't like to leave unfinished business. And um, this is actually like a common design pattern for when people like in designing apps, if people like, if you want people to do something or complete something. Um, for example, like for profile completion, it's very common. Um, like Facebook does it. I used to work at Zynga. Zynga does it. Uh, OkCupid, LinkedIn, they'll have like unfinished status bars as motivation to add more information to your profile. Um, but we wanted users to have a relaxed experience with the tutorial um, and not feel rushed to complete it. So, but so, and always you just need to, there are things we could, also there was like limited retention. Some people like would see the hint complete it, but then a couple days later forget the hint. But it's always a trade-off between, should we, like, should we just show the hint two times, three times? Um, but you don't, like, we didn't want to spam our users either. So it's just figuring out the best balance between providing information when people need it and when they need it. Um, so our takeaways from our experience with the tutorial were that people, like, really like tutorials that offer help when they need it. Um, and also, one, one sentiment that we noticed in the user studies is a lot of people had the mentality of, I'll try it first and consult the manual if I need to. Like, no one wants information up front because they don't know what they need. Everyone wants to, everyone's pretty confident in their ability to figure things out, and for the most part, people can figure most things out. But for those one or two things that they might still need help with, then that's where, like, either some kind of on-demand help or a tutorial system that will provide the right hint at the right time, uh, that would be the best. And also, just as always, consider the trade-offs between making sure people have the best positive experience um, really, and really like your app and can fully use it and understand what they need to do to get around it. Um, but also, you also don't want to annoy them or spam them with too much information. Um, so that's all for me. Thank you very much. And now for Jason with Clean UI Code.